Hello folks, Jason Christman here at JC's Bees. I want to talk about something today that's very, very important. And I hear this so, so often. And many of you experienced beekeepers can probably relate to this. You know, you hear so many new beekeepers say, I didn't treat for mites because I didn't see any. That throws up several red flags to me. Um, you know, they don't understand, first of all, how important it is to manage these mites and you know they put all this expense into getting started in beekeeping and uh, what happens is they decide well I didn't see any mites so I'm not going to treat and then over the course of winter the bees fall on their face they die and then what happens to a lot of the beekeepers is they end up selling the equipment because they give up and you know that's that's not good that's not what we want as a beekeeping community so what I would rather see them do, uh, do mite counts, in which we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute, and um, manage from there, and uh, see their bees thrive come spring, and maybe see them gain a couple colonies from splits, or what have it. Um, but what happens, you know, as a, as a new beekeeper, I can just see them, you know, they're looking at a frame of bees, they're looking for these mites, which, you know, how many new beekeepers actually know what a mite looks like? And then if they do know what it looks like, do they know the size comparison from the mite to the bee? Do they know how small these mites actually are? I have this little vial that I keep on my desk to show new beekeepers and new customers when they come in the spring. And this little vial has three varroa mites and one hive beetle. And then I filled it with rubbing alcohol to keep everything uh, sterile and, and uh, from decaying. But at any rate, I'm going to give you a close-up of this vial. I'm going to have my fingers holding the vial so you can kind of see how teeny tiny these mites are. And you know, the bees are made up of several sections. You get a mite that buries itself up under a section of the bee, you're only going to see half of the mite. So it takes a very, very trained eye to see these tiny little critters. So I can see why a lot of the new beekeepers don't see any mites, even though they're right in front of their face. So do yourself a favor. Buy the needed equipment and follow the, uh, the rules to do mite counts. Um, and then follow with the appropriate treatment. And I want to talk about a few of those treatments right now so let's let's go back here behind me to my hive where i've got a few things set up and i'll kind of go over them a little bit okay so the first thing you want to do is do your mite count uh, there's several different ways to do this to get mite counts there's uh there's bottom boards sticky bottom boards you can put in um, you can do uh, the sugar roll um, you can do the alcohol wash if i was to recommend any and studies have shown the alcohol wash is the most accurate. So if you're looking to do re get results, you might as well get the best. So in my opinion, I would stick with the alcohol wash, mite wash. And I'll link a link to that right up here. Um, and you can also replace the rubbing alcohol for uh, windshield washing fluid. That's what I use this year. Um, in the last couple years, you know, there's been big talk about this, this new shaker. And a lot of you are going to be very familiar with it, I'm sure. But a lot of you new beekeepers, this is going to be a foreign object to you. And this is what you use to do um, alcohol wash. Um, in the past, we've always just used two mason jars hooked together with a lid. And in between the lid was a piece of hardware cloth big enough that the mites could wash back and forth but still contain the bees to one jar. And that system still works today very well. But this here keeps it all very handy because see, you've got a, you've got a measuring cup right inside of here. There's a line that you fill it up with live bees. You drop it down in here. You fill it up with your uh, windshield washer fluid or your rubbing alcohol. Put the lid on. 
you shake it, the bees stay in the basket, and the mites wash down in below where you're able to get your mite count per each colony. From there, you make determinations. If your mite count's high, do you need to treat? If they're low, do you feel comfortable not treating? So, lots to think about there. Um, when it comes to treating methods, there's several different ones on the, on the market. I know there's a lot of natural beekeepers out there that believe in uh, essential oils and different things of that nature. I uh, haven't seen enough science behind that to back that up, so I avoid it. I also believe, I'm a strong believer, that essential oils in the hive just draw in other bees from other hives. So I don't even add essential oils or anything of that nature to my uh, SERP when I'm feeding the bees. Um, I think it just causes robbing. But at any rate, there is uh, several great products on the market. This is uh, kind of low on my list, but it does work. This is called Apivar. I believe this is a, let me check here real quick. This is a 42 day treatment. So that's why it's not high on my list, I guess. But um, if you got 42 days, get her done. All right, here you go. Um, I always, one I always fall back to is the Mighty Way Quick Strips. You get two packs per strip. This is usually enough to do one double deep hive. Um, personally, myself, uh, my mite counts stay low enough all year long until fall just because I sell nukes, I'm making splits, I'm raising queens, so I'm always interfering with uh, the brood cycle. You break the brood cycle, there's nothing there for the mites to move into to raise more mites. So something to keep in mind. Um, so I always fall back on these. Uh, the active ingredient is formic acid. Um, they're actually certified organic, which I like. Um, something I said I would never try because it was too time consuming, but look at me here. Uh, oxalic acid. Uh, you get your one of these vaporizers. You hook it up to a lawnmower battery or a car battery. Um, I actually made me a little cart, like a dolly. Um, you wheel around, you put your battery, and you know I've got everything I need on there. I've got my rags to uh, block off the entrance. Um, I carry my acid, my scoop. I've got a little water. I've got my respirator, uh, my safety glasses. All of it's on my little cart, so it just makes it handy. Uh, the downside to oxalic acid is it's very labor intensive. Um, you got to do three treatments, five to seven days apart. And that's because oxalic acid does not kill mites in cat cells, as where formic acid from the Mitoway quick strips does. So that's the difference. Now, these, I believe, last time I checked, were about $12 a hive to treat for Mitoway quick strips. I think I paid. $15 for this whole bottle of oxalic acid and it takes very little to treat each time I treat a colony so I guess as far as out-of-pocket expense this is definitely the cheaper way now having the number of highs I have this little vaporizer probably isn't so much for me I could save a lot of my labor sorry for the chickens uh, over winter I plan to make me a ProVat uh, vaporizer and uh, use that more commonly here in my bee yard than this. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're somebody that's wanting to learn how to build a ProVap, stay tuned to my channel because over winter I've already got the parts in my uh, shopping cart. I just need to order them all and throw it together and there will be a video on that. So if you don't want to spend 500 bucks to build one and you'd rather spend closer to 100 you might want to pay attention to my channel for the next little bit until that comes out. But give me some time. i got some other projects I'm working on. Um, the Apivar, uh, I can't say for sure how much that costs because I'll tell you the truth, this is an older pack. Um, the same way if you don't recognize the package on the Mighty Way Quick Strip, it's an older box. This stuff, for the most part, if you don't use it all, you buy in larger bulk because you can get it cheaper, Store it in the deep freeze. You'll get a couple years out of it, regardless what the label says. So, um, 
just a little something there for you, a little knowledge for you to keep in your back pocket. But long term, you plan to keep bees very long. Um, this is going to get expensive. This might be more your route. Um, if you don't have very many hives, this will work great for you. But let me tell you, I've got uh, close to 20 nukes set up here in this little yard here. And uh, it's very time consuming to go around and do every one every five to seven days. Uh, I think it took me close to an hour and a half to do them all. And that's just because you've got cool times. You've got to let this cool down. Um, it's it's kind of complicated. So it takes a little while to learn the process to do this. But once you get it down, it is second nature. So something to think about there, folks. So I've just shown you some of the products out there for you to manage your mites. Do the bees and yourself a favor. Take the time. Research some of this stuff. Um, if you're not sure where to acquire some of this stuff, I'll leave links to it in the video description down below. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. And uh, any videos that I have pertaining to this topic, I'll also link down in the video description. So thanks for watching, folks. I hope this video was insightful for you. If you like the video, throw me a big thumbs up. That will help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, but make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. I've seen a chicken move over there. kind of scared me. Anyway, thanks for watching.